Let's get a YouTube and welcome to the house. People are very excited about Yu-Gi-Oh right now with the Master Rule update, and with that are bio after bio after bio. So let's just go ahead and start covering those. But if you are buying cards on TCG Player right now, please remember to use my link in the description down below, costing you nothing extra and supporting the channel directly for cards you'd already be buying. But with these rolling buyouts, sometimes it's just better to go to eBay. Do keep that in mind. Starting out with the DDD buyouts, Destiny King Zero Laplace is very interesting to me because it is a manga promo. It cannot be used in other regions. I'm so sorry for you guys that are about to just look at what you can't play. But I see why people are after it on paper. It's a one scale that's pendulum effect is self-replacing. During your main phase, you can add a face-up DDD pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand, except for himself you can only use this effect once per turn and then as a monster effect you can just special summon it from hand by tributing any ddd monster before damage calc if this card battles an opponent's monster you can activate this effect the attack becomes double its original attack also should this effect get negated it has a another effect that protects it the first time this card would be destroyed by battle each turn this card is not destroyed and you take no damage from that battle it also has piercing for some reason. Let's just throw in another effect. It's a pendulum monster. It deserves a wall of text. My own feelings aside, it's interesting. I can see why people are after it, but DDD players, let me know if you are actually playing Destiny King Zero Laplace. Oblivion King Ragnarok. This is a freaking good card, but it has many different versions. You can get a different version of this for just like 20 cents still so the super rare is towards ten dollars over here on tcg player this is what i'm talking about it's still five dollars over on ebay and then six is somewhat readily available people aren't just slurping them all off right now and dd swirl slime around 540 for its lowest on tcg player around five dollars cheapest on ebay but then quickly more people just want to hollow out their decks when they're excited and a lot of people that have been waiting are like yeah it's finally time i have a feeling true ddd fans probably already had the <laughs> higher rarity versions ddd delete these buyouts medulce's this is interesting to me to see magellan at 50 dollars over here yet barely budging on ebay we still have a 20 dollars copy and it's not even a new listing before a bunch of uh you know 25 available with best offers on so people did completely take these off tcg player for that nice screenshot of lowest a hundred dollars whoa that's crazy uh i think medulce's were heavily underlooked among the initial discussions and then people started to pick up on wow you can just go xe summon xe summon xe summon wow they have some kind of hand loop they have massive damage and they are not held back anymore i think medulce's really did improve but they have the fluffle problem as well of not really being able to set up the best boards when somebody says, no, you go first. They're an OTK deck at heart, and I think there's other decks that will be able to play back and forth a little better, like Burning Abyss. So I, I do find this buyout interesting, but I kind of see that it's not a fully fledged throughout the market one. And uh, I, I can see why people are after it, though ultimate tuning people are really going after the synchro cards i think the synchro loops will have to be dealt with before we get the cards they are absurd and insane uh first editions because that's all it comes in this is a star strike blast card are towards 40 dollars with one at 35 on the fallout it was a low of 40 last night definitely an exciting card but market price of 13 versus this really this is a uh, really crazy i think we'll see this fall back down towards 25 pretty quickly we also have the original ultras let's see where they've gone on tcg player i actually haven't peeked at that an unlimited wait an unlimited star strike blast i i don't know about that one lister i i don't know about that one but we see a five dollar one right under it interesting maybe you might want to check that out <laughs> that's funny there's actually no ultimate tunings at all over here on tcg player besides an actual psa graded one and then a full set from canada totally awesome did bump up after yesterday i think a lot of people realized why am i buying bahamut sharks and not not having the thing i bring out with it so this is towards 
$15, $16 on market right now. It's up a little bit. It's not absurd points. We saw this from original Necroz hype, Trap Tricks Paleo hype. We've seen a lot of this point to where it goes to 15. Now the real question is, where will it go from here? Will it sink back down? Will it stay here? Or will it go up? Ah. <sighs> So, a lot of people are bringing up Dark Ruler No More as a really good card for the upcoming format, and I think it is a generically good card, but let's take a minute to talk about a more complicated kind of topic. Estimated values from pulls are a thing with products, and vendors can still go and get Megatons if they want for around $10.50 from their distributors. So, if Dark Ruler No More really starts to trek up alongside Nibiru, well, vendors can start looking over and eyeing those gold Megatons and going, hmm, you seem really, really alluring to just pull and open, and they'll have this self-regulating price on the market. That's why Nibiru is having so much trouble trying to burst past the $10 mark and stay there. It's just so accessible and so really tantalizing to just go open those Gold Sark Megatons as these prices get hyped and flux. So I think Dark Ruler No More is stuck in second place behind Nibiru, and I think even if it rises towards $5, a ton will suddenly appear on market and they'll just be there, at least for the next six-ish months. I don't think the demand will ever really outweigh that, but over time, it could. Konami's not super apt to reprint their 10 promos. They really like them to stay value for a while. Speaking of 10 promos, Junk Speeder is going up. This card is completely absurd and insane under the new Master Rule, and I almost think it needs to get banned, but we'll see how it plays out. It is a little bit cheaper over on eBay before it is quickly more expensive. Uh, just these copies, I believe, are cheaper. So do consider this card if you are thinking about synchros at all. Uh, being locked into synchro summoning the rest of the turn, really not a problem anymore at all. Uh, I led you guys to the wrong place with rare fish. I rarely do this. But there is a better card now in the game, and its name is Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Interestingly enough, another penny stock is now the Synchro Muddy Mud Dragon, which is very good also, but you can instant fuse this out instead of Rare Fish. My Discord continued with the meme, and I know a lot of them went after this, but if you did buy this on my advice, I apologize. I pinned the comment just... I think three minutes within the video, so thank you guys in the comment section for quickly catching that. But if you didn't go down and read the comments and you did go after this rare fish, there's something a little better for that, and hopefully you only bought those 85 cent copies. Elemental Hero Solid Soldier seems like a very solid investment. He is trickling up, and there's still copies, I think, at around the $1.34, $1.30 from Yu-Gi-Oh! Black Market, actually, and they're very high quantities early, and then there's another catch of high quantities around the $2 mark, so I don't think it's going to explode in price, but this card, as people are talking about heroes, is very nice, and it is cheaper on TCG Player than eBay, and also many more quantities there's like 60 some odd different sellers over there where we only have 27 sellers over here on ebay so do check out solid soldier sooner than later if you're thinking about heroes under the new master rule phantasme is probably the biggest loser from the new master rule because he depends on people playing links he will be permanently pushed back to the side deck i feel like unless we see link heavy decks really take over the meta somehow still and i think almost everyone will play link monsters but they won't always be going into them so people are jumping ship a little and you see it's still holding at 94 dollars over on tcg player well on ebay already a german near mint first edition copy 82 dollars 85 people are going to be yeeting this out and a lot of people in my discord that were considering buying them for the competitive season are just holding off and waiting to see what develops and there's also that matter of well this could be reprinted in the march set <laughs> so or battles of legend before the wcq if battles of legend is before it so phantasme really just feels like you're stuck playing with it the next couple of months if you're trying to get your invite or trying to play in tournaments and you want it as a tool it's a feels bad man moment if you're uh, playing hot potato with this card, I feel like. And finally, the Invoke. People were asking me if this was uh, going up because of the new card last night. It was already baby bumping up in price for a lot of the stuff uh, because of the new Master Rule. I saw prices kind of 
jiggling around there. Invoked Raijin is already one of the best instant fusion targets, hand down, hands down, and it's been at this price for a little bit, despite its market price. I've watched it. And we see the rest of the cards actually starting to go up for their highest rarity. Remember, you still got some nice reprint options with Makaba, but Perga Trio, 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 well... He's starting to go up as well, your OTK option. It's really nice to be able to maybe even play a third invocation now and just go Makaba, Purgatrio, and my Raijin. Whatever you want on the board. And to be able to pop off like that is pretty dang cool. And when I look at the original invocations and the supers, they're bumping up very little from where they were at. Ah, Alistair, now a living building. I don't think the new fusion is all that, but I think it is a good option. That's about all you got out of it. I, I think what you had before is probably maybe all you'll play, but we'll see if it does actually impact the meta. I think Invoked is a really solid engine to look forward towards as we go into the next master rule, because let's face it you can splash it sometimes we've seen that in certain situations or you can make it its own deck thank you guys so much for watching today's market watch i know there was a lot and i went kind of fast because there's just so many cards and you guys typically enjoy that pacing so please subscribe if you haven't already the channel is taking off like never before and i appreciate that from you guys uh like this video if you enjoyed the conversation and again let me know what you think and sorry if you did indeed buy a rare fish off my advice go for a mud dragon hopefully it was cheap